Hello and welcome to the channel. I'm Omanis and today I will review the third studio album by the Icelandic pop singer Björk, Homogenic. Yeah, as you guys may know, I'm a huge Björk fan. I can't really like shut up about her. Uh, I didn't really decide to do this myself, but Amy K requested Homogenic by Björk, so I was like, well, I have to jump on that immediately because you know I'm in my Björk phase right now, so you know. Um, every opportunity I get to re to review one of her albums, I immediately take. So you know, this is the first thing that I'm recording right now, as in reviews. So um, Björk is a Icelandic pop singer, like I said. She is pretty much like my um, how would you say this? She's pretty much my or just the Ice Queen, I would say, just the Icelandic. Uh, queen of pop, of art pop. She is amazing. Uh, she's up there with, you know, Kate Bush is one of the best pop singers or best pop artists ever, I would say, together with Prince and, you know, Billy Joel and people like that. I love those guys. Björk is definitely one of them. Um, I never doubted her musicianship. I always thought she was like a top tier artist for me. Like, well, pretty much a goddess tier, if that is a thing, you know, she's kind of like that for me. So I always considered her to be a great artist, but I never really, you know, back in the day at least, you know, I usually just kind of like wrote her off as one of these really weird abstract artists that I just can't really get into because, you know, her early stuff is conventional. I like that. But then she got really weird on this album and every album after since, you know, every album since after this. So I kind of wrote her off as this like weird avant-garde art that I don't really get. But that doesn't make any sense because, you know, Radiohead went this route, you know, essentially Björk is Radiohead. You know, if you really look at their discographies and, you know, at their styles, they, they really are one and the same. So that's why I both love them and I ship them, <laughs> Tom, and T Tom Björk, so there you go. Uh, best ship ever, OTP. Um, um, yeah, but you know, Radiohead went to the electronic abstract route in the 2000s, you know, uh, I love a band like Maudlin of the Well, uh, they are avant-garde, really kind of like post-rock metal-ish kind of, you know, not, not that Björk is a post-artist, um, but, you know, not as in the post-album, but as in post-pop, post-pop rock metal uh, you can almost argue that with her, with her latest two albums, but what I'm trying to say is that I love I do love some artists that are kind of ab abstract and weird like Tool. Not as big of a fan as their last album, but we're gonna talk about that album in a bit. But uh, but, but yeah, definitely a uh, you know a great album I would say. We can get into the track listing because we're already three minutes in. We're we're already three minutes in. So there you go. Uh, there's only ten tracks on this album, and there's one or there are a few Japanese bonus tracks, but sort of. So Broken, Much Snare, aka Nature's Ancient, uh, written by Mark Bell and Björk, so there you go. Yeah, I can't really say that I he I've heard these tracks, but they're definitely kind of like uh, diehard fan collections, I suppose. You know, if you're a diehard fan, then get them. I would say I, I am a huge fan, but not quite diehard, you know, because it is kind of difficult to get into her later stuff. Same thing with Radio, so there you go. Uh, the first track is Hunter. This is actually a very interesting kind of song, very uh, conventional beats, I would say. A beautiful string uh, arrangement in the back. Really love that string, that kind of cello, orchestra, uh, symphonic build-up that they have. It gets heavier and heavier while the song progresses. Uh, um, I love the lyric, um, you, know, um, you know, how did it go again? I, I said I was soaring again or something. How Scandinavian of me, you know, whenever she goes, whenever she outbursts like that, I fucking love that. Uh, my favorite lyric of this song and arguably the whole album is, you know, I, I'm going hunting. Uh, how the fuck did I go again? Fucking hell. Uh, I'm a hunter. I'm going hunting. I'll bring back the goods, but I don't know when. That's such a fucking great lyric. I love that. It, it's such like, you know, Björk does care, you know, what she's saying with this, I think. She cares for her family, that's what she stated in multiple interviews. She, she loves her family, she wants to hunt because she is like mama bear, so she wants to like 
protect her children and like go hunting for her child for her children so you know uh, i'll bring back the goods but i don't know when as in she wants them to be happy but she doesn't know when it's gonna happen so that's actually a really deep analytical song i would say really beautiful composed the clip is weird as shit it's basically just a white background with Björk like just standing there, standing there with like she's bald, but I'm pretty sure she has like one of those like um, I I would just say that one of those white fucking uh, shower caps, you know, where you can hide all your hair in, you know, as in get the say get the same color as your as your skin color and it looks like you're fucking bald, you know. She 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 wears something like that, so she looks bald. Which she is in that video, I suppose. And then later she turns into this fucking ice bear. She says, I'll go hunting. <laughs> I'm the hunter. <laughs> I fucking love Björk. Um, speaking of loving Björk, we get Yoga. Uh, and this is arguably my autumn favorite Björk song. I love the production on the song, on the whole album, essentially. Um, yeah, I just love the arrangements. I love the, I would just say that, the, the strings again, the, the cello. Love the cello sound on this album, it sounds amazing. Uh, I love all the lyrics, all these accidents that happened to me uh, following the door, Ooh, you, know, you know, that. And then whenever she goes into this, the state of emergency. You know, whenever she does that, beautiful vocal right there, I fucking love that. Um, it's just such an amazing track, you know, the the breakdown, the, the electronic triple breakdown towards the middle section and then she picks it up again with her vocals. Just such a beautiful track, man. The cello. Uh, eventually there's this, there's this like middle or this like ending section, which is like my favorite. Which, you know, it has that cello, it has the cello and the, the triple electronic breakdown and it kind of combines it into one fucking orgasmic a closing song and then you know after that she kind of closed it out kind of you know the cello the, the, uh, it's just pure the cello pure voice and she just like goes out how she started and then she's like you know um she, she sings the lyric again um how beautiful to be you know that and i love you know that's kind of like a, a hidden detail i suppose or kind of like a small well, not per se nitpick because I love it, but it's kind of like a small detail where she says that and she kind of laughs while she does that at the ending. I, I love that cute laugh that she has right there. Really, like, gives the album more character, gives it more uh, personality, I would say. Really great. And then we get Unravel, which is actually, I believe it's one of Tom York's favorite songs ever. Like, if, if you would name, like, a top 10 or, like, a top 5 favorite songs of his, this would be on there. Um, Radiohead singer Tom York called the song Unravel one of the most beautiful songs I've ever heard. The band would cover the song as part of a 2007 live webcast. So I've seen the live version of Unravel, like Tom York, you know, covering that. And I thought it was really cute. I thought, you know, he really tried his best to like imitate or like cover Björk. It was really difficult, but I think he did a great job. You know, it, he did kind of fell out a couple times, but I mean, trying to cover Björk. That's like, um, you know, walking on like a needle bed. It's like nearly impossible. It's, it's fucking hard. So there you go. Beautiful song. Um, I love the kind of, the, the beautiful kind of strings again with the really great drum loop. The, the drum sound on this song is amazing. The, the, drum, uh, the drum beat or the drum loop together with the kind of soaring kind of orchestral beat that the song has really beautiful i would say that after yoga this is my favorite song of the album so definitely one of my all-time favorite bjork songs i don't I, I do like yoga a little bit more because it's just a fucking perfect song unravel too but you know yoga is just a little bit better i think but they're both really fucking great so there you go so i can definitely see why it's to, why, why it's one of tom york's favorite songs so there you go then we get Bachelor Red, which was which was actually my favorite Björk song whenever I was in my like noob phase, you know, whenever I was like, oh debut and poster great, but she gets way too weird for me. You know, I probably was like that with Radiohead as well, with you know fucking Pablo Honey and the banter maybe okay computer. 
I was like, oh, this band is good, but after those albums, they get really weird. So I don't fuck with that. But you know, you have fucking Amnesiac, which is kind of overrated, and you have fucking In Rainbows. So I'm like, how can I fucking deny this shit? You know, I couldn't. I didn't listen to it, but whenever I did, I, I fucking loved this radio. So, uh, Bachelor Rats is one of those songs that I do love. It's, it is still one of my favorite tracks. But I do think it's it's kind of overshadows some of the tracks, I would say. Definitely, it's it's overshadows Unravel. And I would say All New and Light, those are great songs. I do think that Bachelor is still Bachelor Red is still a really great song. And it was my first song that I loved from this album, you know, when I was still in my noob phase. But now, I would say, I still like it a lot, though, but... I definitely prefer every other single of this album, probably. Yeah, I would say that, so there you go. I, I, I do prefer every other single of this album, but I do still really love Bachelor, Bachelor Red, though. Every time it comes on, it's a banger, so there you go. And then we got All New and Like, which is uh, kind of a repetitive song. It definitely gives me some Daft Punk vibes, I would say, because it's so repetitive, but um, you know, the do 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 that's essentially the whole song right there um, it's very repetitive but it has a very nice beat you know it's it's kind of is you know Björk kind of has the Björk or the Björk the Björk mentality Björk kind of has the Daft Punk mentality as in you know it's such a great beat why change it up when you have such a flawless beat uh, behind you so Björk kind of took the Daft Punk mentality right there really love the, the beats really love the title all neon like you know me being a fan of uh, Neon Genesis Evangelion and um, you know me buying neon sneaker shoes I, I was like are these really neon and then it was like 3 a.m. so it was completely dark in my room and my shoes were like you know you know the black was of course you know not doing anything but the neon bottom was like glowing and shit so I was like holy shit this is really cool why I'm saying this is because this song is called all neon like so I was kind of like you know I love neon, so you know I kind of have like a personal thing with all neon life because I, I love just neon related shit. I love that show and I love my shoes. <laughs> well, yeah, I do love my shoes. So there you go. And I do well. That kind of sounds sad. <laughs> that, that sounds sad, but you know my shoes are great. They are great. So there you go. They are neon. So still kind of comes back to the song, I suppose. So All Neon Like is a really great song. I do really think it's underrated as well. It's one of the it's one of my personal favorite tracks of the album, so there you go. Then we get to this middle section, or you know, over the middle section, which is not a bad thing. I do still really love the second side of this album. But I would say that the first side is definitely more entry level in a way. Whereas the second side is definitely more in that kind of abstract avant-garde ambient uh, style that Björk would later pretty much just endorse on her you know next album she would just kind of do that for the rest of her career which is not a bad thing i do really love the second side as well i do think that five years is kind of one of those songs that i do need some more time with i did really like it it, it did kind of sound like really poppy in a way as in you know not necessarily a sellout song but you know kind of a bit too i don't know it sounded a bit too cheery in a way, you know, this album is kind of cool, uh, you know, it's kind of icy, it's kind of cool, it's kind of isolated. And this song is really a beat and cheery, I would say. So it, it did kind of stick out like a sore thumb, but you know, at the same time, I do love a good cheery pop song. And this song was still really great though, so I, I, I wouldn't really deny it, but it's not necessarily a favorite of mine, but I did still really like it. Same thing with Immature. I thought that Immature was really interesting and it had a lot of like unconventional things going on. And it was, you know, it is the Mark Bell version, which sounds a lot more, I would say, timid and a bit more quiet, like the last song, which was also by. Oh, well, no, 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 but that was by uh, How We Be. So there you, there you go. But I don't know what the difference is between this song and the original, if there's an original. But I do really like this song, so you know, if, if it would be replaced by the original, I would probably not uh, be happy about it, because I do really like this version, so there you go. Uh, Alarm Call is also one of my favorites. This is a really great song, I think. A really uh, great beat. I love the, the vocals by Björk. I love her vocals on this track. You know, uh, whenever she says, it doesn't cheer me at all. Ooh, ooh, ooh. 
you know, whenever she does the, the O's and the O's and shit like that, I fucking love that. And whenever she goes into this, this raspy kind of, you know, whenever she does that, I, I fucking love how much energy and how much playful passion there is in this song and this, this album in general. I really love how just energetic and how passionate she is on this track. Alarm call, I love that style as well. Uh, however, I have this song on, like I'm working on the Björk playlist right now and like Björk deleted her Björk TV fucking channel. So like half of the playlist is deleted. Thanks Björk. But she did that because you know, she had her TV channel and her regular channel, which is called Björk twice for some reason. Björk, Björk. I don't know why, but that's how it is, I suppose. But, you know, what I'm saying with this is that she deleted her TV uh, channel, which, like, I got all my clips from that channel, so, like, half of my playlist is deleted right now. So, yeah, thanks, Björk. <laughs> but, um, you know, I love this woman, so I definitely go out of my way to just uh, add to the other tracks because she is re uploading her music videos right now on that channel in a HD. 480p just the best possible quality you can get for those videos what i'm saying with this is that there is a music video for alarm call but it's really bad you know not as in i love this track i think this is an amazing track so i'm not saying that there's a bad song on this album but there's a really bad radio dj mix version of alarm call which is which is featured on the music video so i still have the music video on my playlist i think but you know, if you think that is how alarm call sounds, don't don't think that. That's like a shitty radio DJ mix version. If you go to the playlist, if I'm if I make it pu public, so there you go. Still working on it though. So, but that is um, trash. Alarm call itself is great, and I love the clip. So, you know, if if only Björk would just like put alarm call the original with that music video. If only she did that. It wouldn't be perfect because I love the clip. I love the I love whenever she goes into the water and she has like this pir uh, piranha face to scare off the pir pir piranhas that were like chasing her. And then you know she goes back onto her like uh, how, how would you say that her boat in a way. And and then I love that whenever she flips her hair, she like has this stand where she is like. I'm a fucking goddess. I fucking love that uh, that imagery right there. It's really like one of her most beautiful uh, stances right there. One of her, one of her most beautiful poses, I would say. Uh, yeah, then we get Pluto. Uh, Pluto is a very polarizing song. I, I would really love the that this. I would basically describe Pluto as Daft Punk on. Uh, how would I say this? Daft Punk on heroin. Uh, no, 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 this is Daft Punk on steroids. That's how I would describe the song. This is Daft Punk on steroids because this track is fucking crazy. Uh, the beats are so unconventional. The, the beat is very repetitive, but it, it has kind of a horror, kind of very creepy tone to it, which I think is great. It's three and a half minutes long, so it's one of those like, it, it, it's, you know, kind of think about, you know, Apex, twi Apex Twins. Come to Daddy, it's kind of like that. It's it's a very like polarizing, terrifying song. Music video is creepy as well. There's like one music video with like a naked guy in like an orange brown room, like an orange brown dark room. And like he, um, he just goes fucking crazy in that clip. I don't know what's going on with that track, with a music video, but I love this song. I think it's really good. It's really all over the fucking place. It's fucking chaotic, it's hectic. Um, it's just a crazy fucking song, man. It's just like, yeah, yeah. I want to say something inoffensive, but let's not go there. Or inoffensive. I want to say something offensive, but let's not go there. Want to stay respectful, um, you know, with this album and Bjork. So there you go. Um, I wanted to call the song like a crazy bitch, but you know, not not to say that Bjork is a crazy bitch. But you know, this song is kind of like that. So there you go. You know, she she has her crazy moments. And this song is one hell. Yeah, I guess I, I guess I'll say it. This 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 song is one one hell of a crazy bitch. Not not Björk per se, but this song rather. This song in uh, this song in specific. So there you go. 
And then we get the 10th and final track, which is All, of, All Is Full Of Love, which is actually a really interesting closing song. Because Pluto, Pluto was so crazy and so chaotic. And All Is Full Of Love is so peaceful and so quiet and so just like moody in a way. Very doom and gloom. Definitely love this track. This is a great single. Um, the music video is really fucking weird. Whenever I saw this music video, I was like shitting my pants. I had no idea what to fucking do. You know, uh, I, I was like, you know, showing to people, oh, look at these tool videos. They're so creepy. But, yeah, I mean, I was never scared of any tool video, but looking at these fucking Bjork videos, like, they still terrify me to this day. She has really like an like an unsettling, very like uncomfortable kind of tone to her, which, um, you know, she really goes out of her way to make art and, you know, not all art is very comfortable. You know, some some art is very expressive and very out there. So you, you don't always have like the, the right opinion or the, you know, the right mood with art. But if you let it grow on you, if you let if you let it sit with it, if you let it sit with you, and you get used to the the terrifying or like the the unsettling video or you know the art then it can really grow on you and that's essentially what all is full of love did um the original thing is great with the with the kind of like glitch pop electronic beat behind it but there's kind of a weird thing going on with this track this is the how we be version and this track is essentially just like an acapella song which Björk would re later revisit on Medulla, of course, which is an all a cappella album, pretty much the best one, I would say. Um, and this this version is definitely kind of uh, spine chilling, I would say. Very, very cold, collected, very, um, very emotional, I would say. Just a very like uh, cold, bitter track, which kind of leaves the album a very cool icy note i would say which is pretty much a perfect note to end on especially with björk coming from iceland so you know that's pretty much the perfect uh ending song i would say um i would probably like i would say that i prefer the original as in you know with the music video and the, the more electronic the, the more glitch pop electronic uh beats heavy song i would prefer that version but I do think that this is a better album closure in a way because it is all stripped down. It is all almost a cappella with some like ambient production going on. It's definitely a better closing track. So I do think that this is a that this is a uh, good decision by Björk. But still, I would wish that you know I could own "All Is Full of Love" the original, like the the beat version. Uh, I wish I could own that, but I guess I will get Greatest Hits by Björk because that song is on there, the original All Is Full Of Love, I'm pretty sure, and Play That is on that album, so I'm definitely, I'm probably getting Greatest, greatest Hits as well, because, you know, just because of Play That and the original All Is Full Of Love, so there you go. So, that's my review of Björk's Homogenic. Um, yeah, I was definitely kind of like... You know, polar wise by the album at first because I, you know, I was like, oh, you know, she's going more into this electronic route and I'm, I don't like this. And uh. but you know, eventually she was gonna go this route. I, you know, I knew this, and I think everyone that looked at debut and post knew that she wasn't gonna cater to like a generic pandering. You know, she wasn't gonna cater to a generic crowd. So I definitely like that she, you know, progressed as an artist and she only got more abstract and more weirder after this point. So, uh, overall this album is amazing. Um, I don't really have a flaw with it. I, you know, arguably all of the tracks are my favorite. So, this album gets a 10 out of 10 for me. I really love this album. Um, pro probably, you know, I do think it's better than Debut. It's, it's definitely better than de Debut, I would say. Um, I do think that, you know, it, it is kind of up there with Post, I would say. Post is a really great album, I love Post. Uh, but it might even be better than that. But I do think that, I will say this, I think that Homogenic overall is a better album than Post. But I do think that Post high notes, like the high notes, the high points of Post, are some of my all-time favorite Bjork songs. And one, I will say this, one of 
uh, one of the songs of Post is my other favorite Björk song. So, I, you know, I think you can guess which one, because it's usually the highest rated one. But I do think that the the consistency, the, the, the consistent quality with Homogenic does beat out Post though. So I do think that her first three albums are definitely pretty great, pretty entry level, I would say. None of that is a bad thing. I definitely say that, uh, listen to these three albums if you love pop music. I will say though, if you, you know, if you're more of a regular pop fan, then, you know, as in more unconventional, more like abstract, ambient, avant-garde pop like Björk, then definitely give her first albums a listen and then get into homogenic. Probably my personal favorite at this moment or arguably ever is Vespertine. I might, like I have Homogenic on my favorite list right now. I might change that around with Vespertine because I fucking adore Vespertine, but I love this album as well. So, <clears throat> Vespertine, Homogenic, and Post are like three of the best pop albums I've ever heard in my life, so those are great. Debut is good too, but it's still kind of like, you know, it's almost there. It's still great, but you know, it's not on an all time scale, I would say. So, there you go. So there you go, uh, that's my review of Björk's Homogenic, I love this album, I love this woman. Uh, let me know what you think about this album in the comments down below, what do you think of Björk, love or hate her, let me know in the comments down below. Uh, do all those things as usual and I'll see you in the next video, peace.